usually I focus on the part that actually creates the sound that you listen to, uh, be that earphones, earbuds, headphones and such, which of course both come in wired and wireless varieties. Well, how about stuff that bridges that divide? Well, today we'll be looking at Bluetooth accessories that turn your wired gear into wireless to varying levels of success. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. At first, I wasn't really much interested in these accessories, but I managed to uh, pick them up for a good price, so screw it, why not? Before that though, I tried cheaping out and found this thing. So this is the uh, JTKE T40. A really memorable name, I know. Uh, on the listing, it didn't even say the product name and it just had some generic search engine terms. Uh, though it does say that there's you know, NFC pairing, AppDeck support, uh, 3.5 and 2.5 millimeter outputs, uh, playback through an SD card slot, micro SD card slot, and a shutter button for your phone camera. It's like, like, damn, what doesn't this thing do, right? All this for like four bucks? Yeah, I ordered it. Well, if you don't know, this Bluetooth adapter thing is basically a cheaply made version of more premium offerings. Uh, essentially a Bluetooth DAC amp that you plug your wired gear in, and clip onto your clothes, basically decoupling you from the port of your phone. So this is how it looks. It's a cheap little plastic box with a clip in the back, uh, a front end of glossy plastic that I haven't even bothered to take in the wrap off, and it's got a bunch of side buttons. It's light in the cheap sense, and if you shake it, it makes noises, so that's fun. It charges through the USB Type-C port with an LED indicator and the lady making announcements inside is extra lo-fi sounding. Power on. Bluetooth mode. Connected. Disconnected. Power off. Well, I mean, the 3.5mm output works fine, but the 2.5mm only plays out of one side. I'm guessing that this 2.5mm is used for like some headsets with a mic instead of being an actual uh, balanced output. Feel free to tell me what this is in the comments if you know why. Uh, the NFC tag is legit and yes, you can use the camera shutter for your phone too. Pretty neat, nifty. There's also a built-in mic that works, but well, it's pretty terrible. But then there's the micro SD card slot, uh, which I couldn't get to work even after shuffling the folder trees, putting the music right in the root storage. I even, I think I tried formatting the card, I don't remember exactly, but maybe it's broken, maybe I haven't done it right, who knows. Now for the actual sound of this thing, it's, uh, well, the posting lied to me. There is no AppDeck support, heck, there isn't even AAC support, it's just SBC. Well, still, considering the four bucks that you're paying this thing, the sound that comes out of this thing isn't half bad. Like, it's getting decently loud, but well, the noise floor is definitely quite present, even for someone who's not that sensitive to that stuff like me. Battery life comes in at about four hours give or take. But again though, for four bucks uh, and the features that it gives you, no, the ones that work at least, uh, sure, I would say it's worth it. If you just want something to decouple your phone port and a cheap means to turn your budget IEMs into wireless counterparts for casual listening, uh, check out the JTKE T4. I would not write recommend it though, uh, given the horrible noise floor and the overall cheapness and the lack of quality control from a $4 product like this. So here is the Bluetooth DACAM concept done right. It's the Shanling UP4, UP4 I guess. If it were still at the MSRP price, I wouldn't have grabbed it. But the thing went on clearance sale for a pretty good price. So. I grabbed it to see 
what a good Bluetooth DAC amp would perform like. Uh, it doesn't have all the fancy tricks of the JTK thing, uh, like the SD card slot nor the camera shutter button, but it promises to be a competent, wireless high res enabled source for your wired gear, sporting aptX and LDAC codecs, along with um, dual 3.5mm and 2.5mm balance outputs. So, uh, with like different gain and filter settings. Build on the L4 is definitely improved compared to the JTK. More solid feeling, heftier, and the clip is actually removable instead of being built in. Now I'm putting a skin on the front, but the L4 actually has glass front and back that feels and looks premium. Though so being glass made are slippery fingerprint magnets. There is also NFC pairing and an LED indicator. The built-in mic here is also quite solid. It's up to par with the stuff that's actually integrated in your phones. Here is a recording made through the microphone of the Shanling Up 4. Battery life is advertised as up to 15 hours for 3.5mm playback and 10 hours for 2.5mm. Though I got closer to maybe 5 or 6 hours. Uh, driving them pretty hard and the higher gain settings out of headphones. Yes, this thing can drive up to like semi power hungry headphones as well. And I'm not discounting the possibility that since this thing was on clearance sale, the battery has probably been well used. As for the sound, uh, the Shelling Up 4 outputs a neutral signature with little to no coloration and I have little complaints as to its performance. Uh, with the up 4 you can essentially replace uh, lower to mid-tier dongles, as you can also use the up 4 from the USB-C port as a wired dongle should you choose to do so. Kind of defeats the purpose of it being wireless, but hey, you have the choice. Still, I'm not convinced of this form factor. I know there are many dedicated fans of this uh, type of Bluetooth accessories and I know that stuff like the Delux Q5K it even has like, parametric EQ settings, but, but I just don't see the appeal. Uh, you have to carry this extra little box around just like you would a wired dongle. Um, and in my experience, the clip here, it, it's not strong enough for even just normal commuting. I find that there's a uh, low but present chance that the uh, up force clip will lose its grip. Not to mention that you, you still have the wire of the IEMs or the headphones dangling around. I mean the only real point I can give it is that you don't need to have your gear tethered to your phone. Allowing for some extra degree of versatility and mobility. But the setup you have it is still very messy with, you know, you have your phone being the source, that amp has an in-between, and then your gear with its dangling wires. If you go out and touch grass a lot, yes, big ass from this fan base, I know. But, but you know that the less things you have to carry around for your audio needs, the better. And this Bluetooth that amp setup it is still too messy, in my opinion. Okay, so if these Bluetooth DAC amps are still too cumbersome. What's a more elegant solution? Well, behold, the TRN BT20S. Uh, these follow a different approach to wireless audio. Instead of being a wireless dongle that you plug your IEMs in, these use similar electronics to true wireless sets, but include two pin or MMCX connectors so that you can plug in your IEMs. Now there are premium solutions from FIO with their UTWS series, but I ain't got the cash for that, so I went cheap and found the TRN BT20S. Uh, these are going for about 15 bucks, give or take. Now rumor has it that FIO actually approached TRN to make a BT20S with a slightly better build and sold it as the UTWS1. So hey, if Theo thinks this is good enough to put their name on it, then this BT20S should hopefully be pretty decent. So the BT20S has a matte plastic build that feels decently solid. This whole assembly is light despite its bulky look. 
and it's nano coated so you have some degree of sweat proofing uh, I guess discounting the IEMs that you plug it into I guess uh, the stupid thing about the BT20S is that it charges through micro USB with these uh, two little ports at the bottom here they have um, rubber flaps to you know keep it watertight or at least hopefully keep it watertight and you have to use this weird split dual micro usb cable that they provide you with uh, of course though if you get a little case to kind of pair it with and to store the charge cable then the bt20s can still be easily stored so you interact with the bt20s using these uh, physical buttons and the Bluetooth lady announcer here has an incredibly clear voice. Power on. Connected. Disconnected. Pairing. Power off. Easily the clearest I've heard out of any Bluetooth audio product. The chipset being used here is the uh, QCC3020 from Qualcomm. So you do get AppDeck support. Uh, and the built-in mic is on par with its true loss counterparts. AKA pretty bad, but uh, usable for basic requirements. This is a recording made with the microphone of the TRN BT20S True Wireless Adapters. Now, I'll be pairing the BT20S with my Moondrop Kato, but I have also tried it with the Moondrop Starfield, Trufier Hola, and other IEMs with removable two pin connectors. The BT20S is uh, advertised for eight hours of playback, uh, but usually I get about four to five hours before having to charge it with dual LED indicators on the housing. So, how does the BT20S perform? Pretty decent, but uh, again, adjust your expectations for a $15 product. It gets sufficiently loud, certainly louder than the usual TrueWaz product, so you get a bit more volume and room. Audio quality here is not stellar, but better than the usual TrueWaz solution. However, the Qualcomm ship in here is actively removing and omitting details of songs, something that is revealed when you pair it with a nice IEM like Lucado. And it, it makes me realize that the biggest bottleneck of better sounding TrueWaz earphones and earbuds aren't the drivers. The drivers themselves are already pretty good. It's the electronics. Oh, and until Qualcomm makes better solutions at cheaper prices, there is a technicality ceiling that all TrueWaz products will always hit and be unable to surpass. Another weakness of the BT20S is that it has one of the highest noise floors I have heard in a Bluetooth product. So if you are particularly sensitive to that, I would avoid this one. Still, this is the winner for me in terms of making wired audio products wireless. Being less low profile than TrueOS earbuds, but they are still actually very light and comfortable in the ear. And I have no problems wearing the BT20S for longer sessions. It's a much cleaner solution than the Bluetooth DAC amps, and if higher end stuff like the FIO, UTWS3, and 5 ever get significant price cuts, I've definitely got my eye on them. So as of right now, there are two camps of wireless conversion for your audio gear. Either you go with a Bluetooth DAC amp, or you buy into true wireless adapters. Both have their pros and cons, and although the Bluetooth DAC amps offer better uh, sound and wider compatibility, I find that these TrueWAS adapters to be the better solution. They streamline your setup for outdoors use and eliminate excess wires, even if at the cost of some sound quality. Which, uh, of course, these are products to tie you over until the true wireless products truly surpass wired sound. But until that time comes, and I expect that time to be quite a long time, this is the most viable stopgap solution. And that is the end of yet another video. Uh, as usual, I'll leave the links to the music I use in the description, as well as links to my Patreon where you can support and donate to me so that I actually have the funds to bring more stuff in for review. 
Of course, patrons will get access to extra photography of the products, behind the scenes footage, and video scripts, uh, as well as whatever extra tidbits I happen to put on there. Uh, thank you for all the patrons who supported me to uh, keep the channel going. And um, of course, if you like the video, like the video. If you want to have any suggestions, any questions, any inquiries, uh, feel free to participate in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel to see more content like this and hit the bell button so that the videos get delivered to your feed. If nothing else, then um, I thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Mr. Marion, signing off.